okay, I'm home. Surgery's over with and I'm feeling great. Um, I took notes during my stay at the hospital, so I'm going to go over how I felt each day and what was going on. Um, surgery was, I'm looking for my calendar here. Surgery was December 1st and today is December 6th. So the surgery day, one, two, three, four, five. So five days. So I guess it's six, six days post-op. My surgery was six days ago. Um, so let me see my notes. I can't believe how great I feel. Um, the coolest thing, I had mitral valve, uh, mitral regurgitation, and the blood was regurgitating back into my pulmonary arteries, um, making me short of breath. And if I even held my arm up, even with nothing in it, if I had my arm up like this, I would get short of breath. I'd feel like I was running out of air, and that's not happening. It's like it's instant fix, like I can breathe, you know? The only um, breathing issues I have now is because um, there's inflammation, so there's not as much room around for the lungs to expand, or maybe my incision hurts or my sternum hurts a little bit. Um, so I have that hard to breathe stuff, but like I can go like this all day and my hands aren't getting numb and I'm not, it's not affecting my breathing. So, um, it's just amazing how instant once your heart is working correctly, how instant, um, it is. So let's see. The day of surgery on December 1st, um, I thought people said that that you're going to want the breathing tube out as soon as you wake up. So let your person there with you know that you want it out to uh, just tell them to please take her breathing tube out. She doesn't want it in or whatever. The breathing tube wasn't a big deal. Um, I didn't mind that it was in. It didn't feel like it hurt my throat. I could just feel that it was helping me breathe. And because it was hard for me to breathe, it was kind of nice having that assistance. Um, the problem with the breathing tube was it was very flexible, thin plastic. So I was closing my mouth and my teeth were biting on it, making a kink. I don't know why they make it with such give. Um, and I was awake and I had a notebook so I could write because I couldn't talk. And I asked the nurse, I'll have to look at the notebook because I was half drugged up with anesthesia too and maybe painkillers. Um, but I remember the nurse kept saying, I, I can't read your, can you write a little neater? I, I can't read it. So I remember I was trying to space the words more because I wasn't really looking at the notebook. I was just trying to write. Um, look at that. I can talk and not run out of air. <laughs> um, uh, so with the breathing tube, I wrote down and asked the nurse, um, I told her I'm biting down and blocking the air from the tube. Can we do something? And she said, yeah, don't bite down. And I'm like, I can't hold my mouth open. And all I could think of is when I had a root canal, the dentist put something called a bite block, a, a solid thing here to hold your mouth open. And so I think I wrote like, do you have a bite block or something? And she didn't. So that's, that's something... I remember that, you know, that's pretty important. And I don't think the nurse noticed that I was biting down on it, you know, because my lips were probably hiding it. Um, so that's that's something I wanted to talk about. Um, I asked the, uh, this is going to be long, so maybe I'll split it up into days on these uh, hospital videos. Um, I asked the anesthesiologist, I always do horribly with anesthesia. So I asked him, you know, can you please make sure you put in something for nausea at the same time because um, I, I get sick with anesthesia and I can't imagine throwing up knowing I'm going to have tubes and an incision and a broken sternum and I, I really don't want to throw up. Um, and he's like, oh, no problem. Well, yeah, I'll put something in there. Um, and I ended up throwing up anyway. And I think it's because it's such a long surgery that you have so much anesthesia for a longer period of time versus some kind of quick surgery that you're not under as long. So um, 
But I know some people it doesn't bother, but I know it bothers me. So um, then I, I, oh, before we went in the hospital, when I got to the um, parking garage, I hadn't wrote my son a letter yet. And that's really something I needed to do. Um, just final things to say to him just in case. And I didn't give the letter to him. I, I had it in the notebook for someone to give it to him for me. Um, and it just said, you know, what I hoped for his life and how proud I was of him and um, to to try to keep a good relationship with his dad. Um, you know, just things like that. Uh, hang around the right people. You know, don't hang around with shady people and um, keep being the good person that you are. And he's kind and compassionate and sweet. Um, so anyway, um, I wrote that letter. And, of course, I got all emotional, and um, then I went in to do the surgery, and I felt good knowing I took care of everything, and I wrote that letter to my son, and I got out anything I needed to get out. Uh, oh, and then my husband that was with me said, um, you know, we didn't talk about if something does happen, do you want an autopsy done? And I'm like, I didn't even think of that. And I said, well... Yeah, if something's wrong and I suspiciously die, definitely I want you to find out what it was so it won't happen to another patient. Um, so, so yeah, we talked about if I'd want an autopsy or not because his dad uh, passed away recently, I guess a year ago. And um, <laughs> um, just a, his one-year anniversary of his death was days before I had my surgery. So it was on his mind. Um, and so when his dad died, they asked him if he wanted an autopsy, and he didn't know if his dad wanted an autopsy, and he didn't feel right about, you know, cutting his dad open and stuff. So that that's something you got to think about, you know, when you're doing your advanced directive or your last will or tell, telling your healthcare proxy what you want. Um, add that in there, too. And he asked me if I wanted to donate my organs. And that was something I, I never wanted to. Um, this a whole other subject. Um, but <laughs> my mom uh, has this conspiracy theory that um, they can only take your organs while you're still alive. So if you're brain dead and you're not going to pull through while you're still hooked up to machines, your organs are okay to harvest. So she thinks, my mom thinks, that the doctors might say, yeah, she's not going to live. So they can take the organs, and then I'm going to die. So that's, <laughs> my mom thinks there's this black market for organs in our country and in the world. Um, so that's why I always felt like I didn't want to donate my organs. However, after my surgery, as I was recovering, um, the... My husband said that in the waiting room, he was talking to a woman whose husband was there um, that he thought he just needed stents or something put in and his heart is so damaged he needs a transplant. And so they put him on the top of the list for the transplant. And um, we found out the hospital only does 50 transplants a year. That's only one a week. And... I'm thinking how many people need hearts and they're on waiting lists and they don't get them. And it just really affected me. And um, I think I wrote something to my mom that if anyone in our family currently needed an organ, they could take the organ. But um, otherwise, I didn't want to donate. But I, I think I might be changing that now. It's definitely something th to think about. Um, because I, I, what am I going to do once I'm dead with my heart or my eyes? Or, you know, I'd even donate my body to science in case they can find connective tissue disorders or Marfans or if, if they can do something with my body to figure something out. Um, it's at least my death wasn't a waste, you know. Um, so I'll probably be changing that. So let's go back to the first day. Oh, so I, I after... I woke up, um, 
I ended up, they were only giving me ice chips and I still vomited. I vomited ice chips. Um, they tried to give me crackers and ginger ale to settle my stomach. Couldn't keep those down. And I actually thought that it was really going to hurt to throw up. But, and I, I don't mean to give you too much information, but, you know, you're watching this because I'm, I'm telling you really what happened. Um, I'm not holding back anything. When I threw up, it was all liquid because all I had was water and soda. And so it just came out in a gush. It didn't hurt. I wasn't like, um, what's, what's the word I'm thinking of? I can't think of the word. When you're, is it lurching? I can't think of the word. You know, when you're trying to throw up and nothing's coming out. Like, that didn't happen. I just threw up and it came out. It didn't hurt. Um, and so I stayed on a liquid diet, but I didn't have an appetite because I was nauseous. So it wasn't until 24 hours is how long it took all the anesthesia to exit my body. So after the 24 hours, that ne that day, so my 25th hour on, for a full day, I just, I asked, you know, just give me a liquid diet because I just don't want to throw up. So they kept me on a liquid diet because I wanted to. Um, and then the next day I, I was eating fine. I wasn't nauseous and I wasn't really hungry, but I knew my body needed the energy, the nourishment, you know, to heal and be strong. So I ate things that, it, you know, I didn't get to pick my food that day. They, they brought me what they brought me. And it was like cream of, wasn't cream of wheat. It was cream of rice and some, I just remember prune juice. It was just really yucky things. And I ate it anyway because I just knew I, I needed the nourishment. I wasn't going to be a picky eater, you know. Um... And then today, I would say, my breakfast today, I chomped it down. I was actually feeling hungry today for the first time. Um, um, when they ask you what you want with your meal, don't feel like you can only circle one thing in each category. Because if you circle orange juice, you can write times three, and they'll bring you three orange juices. If it says you want super salad, circle that you want both if you do, and they'll put both on your tray. So don't, I, I kind of overpicked the food because I figured I didn't know what my stomach could handle. And maybe when the food came, if the salad was turning my stomach, I could switch to the soup. So, so that's what I did as far as ordering my meals. Um, and I, I wanted peaches because I, I know anesthesia makes you constipated and canned peaches always help me. So, and I worked at a preschool and the teachers didn't like when the cafeteria served um, canned peaches at the, at the, uh, in the nursery room I was in with the toddlers because they'd have some messy diapers, several of them. So anyway, peaches were a big, you know, if it said fresh fruit, I, I wrote peaches, please. Um, so you can be more specific than, than the list says. Um, another thing with that I want to talk about, about the liquid diet, the ginger ale that she brought me, um, and you want clear liquids, because you're also going to have phlegm, and I'll talk about that too, um, the ginger ale gave me gas, and I'd have gas bubbles here, and that did not feel good, and then I had to burp, and it just didn't feel good at all, so I realized fairly quickly that either I'm going to let this ginger ale go flat or I'm just sticking to water. And why am I even drinking soda anyway? I need to be more healthy. You know, I, I just thought the ginger ale would settle my stomach. Um, but it, the the gas was not pleasant because the carbonation in the, in the soda. Um, when they took out my breathing tube, um, you know, they counted to three. I'm making a video. Thank you, honey. Okay, thanks so much. Um, my son just picked up my medicine for me. Um, so they said we're going to count to three and pull it out. And when they pulled it out, it just felt like it was going and going. It didn't hurt. It did. It wasn't even uncomfortable. I could just feel it coming out. There, there was no pain. But I was worried because I guess she got it out. I wish I had a video because 
I was half out of it. She took it out and then all of a sudden my mouth, if you filled your mouth with fluid and spit it out, that's how much phlegm came out. Because the tube, I guess your body makes phlegm because it's not, it's a foreign thing. Um, and I felt like I was suffocating or choking because she had the thing in to suction the phlegm out. And I felt like I needed to get, my mouth was full of it and I just needed to spit it out. So I think they had a pan, but I just spit it out. It went all down my chin. I just needed to get it out of my mouth because I, I felt like I... I was going to choke, you know, so, like I was drowning or something. Um, but it was quick. It was very quick, but it's just what happened. It wasn't more than that whole phlegm coming suctioned and now it was probably four seconds. But it just, it, it, it wasn't, uh, I'm wondering if that's what waterboarding feels like. Because it, it felt like it was just thick fluid that was tough to get out. And it was blocking my airway. Um... So I think that's it for day one. Um, so I'm going to stop this video and start a video for the day after surgery. Um, if you want to see all my new videos, I'm going to be uh, posting them throughout my um, healing. And so subscribe and if you have any questions, put them in the comments. I'm glad to answer anything. I'm very open and honest, and uh, I look forward to, to your input on everything. All right, 